This week on the podcast, never before has wrestling happened on a ship and never before has a bird flown into a wrestling match. Kenny Omega talks filming a horror show and I do a little bit of cruise ship comedy. Enjoy the show. This is the art of wrestling with professional wrestler Colt Cabana. doing come on in sit down relax you're about to listen to the art of wrestling a professional wrestling podcast it's a life podcast it's a personal journal it's an entryway to the minds and souls the hearts and the lives of the people involved in the world of professional wrestling i am your host my name is colt cabana i am a tan tan man i'm a cruise boy i'm a captain i'm a sailor i'm a seaman most importantly though i am a professional wrestler and i am coming to you live from my studio Apartment in Chicago, Illinois. Before I go any further, this fans supporting listen to support a podcast supported by people just like you. We give it to you free of charge every single Thursday. Coldcommenter.com, iTunes, SoundCloud, wherever you get your podcast from. A couple great ways that you can support. Rate, review, and subscribe on iTunes. Tell a friend. Facebook it out. Tweet it out. The best way to support. Coltmerch.com, DigitalColt.com. T-shirts, buttons, pictures, posters, DVDs, a children's book, micro brawlers. Pretty soon, action figures. This is all available. Coltmerch.com digitalcult.com and you got it right that's the fun of this podcast there will always be a different scenario for me in my wrestling career and where we're at the vfw halls the high school auditoriums the fair shows and now the cruise ship the cruise ship the same vacation that mama cabana used to take the cabana family on when i was a teenage boy yes But now I am no longer a teenage boy, and I am amongst not only my peers of professional wrestlers, but every single person who is just as obsessed with professional wrestling as I am. It was a meeting of a great community. We're going to talk all about it and the happenings that happened on said cruise ship, the Jericho Cruise, if you will. We flew down to Miami. First of all, this podcast is sponsored by ProWrestlingTees.com and OneHourTees.com. They flew me down to Miami. Japanese style, they were my sponsors for the week. Dinners, hotels, cruise cabins. They sponsored the cruise and uh, they also sponsored myself and Marty DeRosa. So we flew to Miami, got on the boat, and right away, I was doing commentary. That was my that was my gig. I had three comedy gigs and also five, six, maybe seven slots of commentary. I was doing the Sea of Honor tournament. So I got to the quote-unquote locker room a little bit early and was trying to do some homework as Ian Riccoboni was not on the ship. I was doing play-by-play. Will it hold up? Who knows? But it was me, and for the most part, Jay Lethal doing commentary. I got there early, like I said, into the quote-unquote locker room. And that's where I saw Christopher Daniels, and we talked about, was this a history-making moment? The boat literally just took off. Literally just started. Sound the horn. Jim Ross and Jerry Lawler just welcomed everybody. Did you see that? I just saw the very end of it, because I was walking back here. I'm always early, so call time for me was 4.30, but it's a little before... I just wanted to find where we were dressing and get set. Yeah, it was only me in the, in the locker room. What? Well, not a locker room. This... It's not a locker room. It is the place where they do classes for the gym. Heavy bags in the corner from where they do their boxing class. So this is where we're going to dress. And you claimed, you think right off the bat, that we're the first ever wrestlers to wrestle on, on, on the sea. I believe so. I remember, because I said it and you said the wrestle vessel, but I don't think the wrestle vessel had matches. I think it was just a big meet and greet. We did one for TNA in 2012. It was a cruise. But all we did was meet and greets, and we had a beach party and things like that. We never wrestled. So, and the reason I think it's the first time is because talking to the Ring of Honor officials who helped set this up, they said that... There was a logistical issue because of the boat. They needed to make a certain ring because it had never been done before. So there has to be some sort of gyro system to keep the the ring level. And so they spent thousands of dollars. No. I swear, that's what they said. That's what they told me. They said they had to figure out, they had to have engineers come on a boat, figure out how to keep the the ring connected to the boat because we can't just drive it into the deck. We can't nail it to the deck, we can't, so something has to happen for it to be connected to the deck somehow. And so all of that, uh, as far as I know, is a first time thing. So I am the first match today, so conceivably, I could be the first man to wrestle on open waters in professional wrestling history, which is cool. 
Congratulations. Thank you so much. A good handshake for all of you people listening right there. Colt, just shook my hand. Also, if this was a better podcast, I would go and find the engineers and ask them. But I, I, don't, I don't know if they're engineers on this boat. I think I would someone, ask somebody who has so who something. Looks, so who looks official. But I'm just asking you. Ask him. He might know. Or not. He might be the gym teacher. That man, he did not know. So we did not ask him. He looked at us like we were maniacs. And everybody did gather in the aerobics room. And the booker booked. And the wrestlers prepared to wrestle. Jay and I made our way out to the commentary booth. And we were commentating, and then just in the middle of it, I, A, wanted to get a feel for how Jay was feeling, how we were all kind of taking in the cruise, and I wanted you to be able to hear the fans, the madness that was actually happening while we were watching the wrestling. So it's the very first night. What are your thoughts so far, Jay? Uh, I was worried in the beginning, but, you know... I actually think this is pretty cool so far. You were worried about the cruise and everything? Yes, I was. What were you worried about? I was worried about getting a bunch of rowdy wrestlers on a boat, a bunch of rowdy fans. You're trapped. You can't go anywhere. Um, Jay, it's not even nighttime on the first night yet. (laughs) But I'm just saying, so far, so good, you know? And we're actually, we're watching Brandy Rhodes and Jenny Rose. We're taking a break in our commentary duties to watch some women's act. We're in the middle of it with everybody here. (laughs) We're in the middle of a show right now. Uh, we don't have to do commentary during the ladies' match. That's going to be done a little later. So, yeah, we got some free time. We're going to podcast it up. Is that what this is or no? This is for your own little sick collection. What else? <laughs> what? Is this for my weird fetish of audioizing and watching women's wrestling? <laughs> hey, you never know. You never know with you. You always got your hand in something. That's true. Uh, did you ever think you would be wrestling on a cruise? Never, never. But I do go on a cruise every year. So the worst part is, since I go on a cruise every year, I know how it feels to be on vacation. You get to relax. But this is not like that because we're every working. Day, yeah, every day we got to be in a specific location. You got to go do this. So uh, and I got to do some comedy shows on top of doing the announcing. You got a full schedule. In fact, sometimes the show ends and you only got. Three, four minutes to get to your next thing. Luckily, my schedule isn't that brutal. It's going to be fun. We'll check in later, maybe. All right. All right. And I think we were both right. It was a lot of fun. There was some really, really good, serious professional wrestling going on. But there was also the idea that we were on a cruise. There was wrestling on a cruise. Also, A, do I think I should have been wrestling on the cruise? Yes. I think if we're going to talk about the silliness, having silly matches, fun matches, fun opportunities, fun. Fun. Yeah, I think that's right up my alley. But that came later with the uh, the stage shows. But there was so many different things. We'll, we'll get into the, the Mario people a little bit later. Delirious and Matt Taven had a kiss my foot match. Cheeseburger tagged with Sumi Sakai and they switched outfits, which oddly may or may not have turned me on. And Dalton Castle, who quote unquote received a concussion in his first round match, wasn't able to make it for the second round match, but somebody replaced him. Oh man, you are so close to me. I feel like you're inside my mouth. It's very loud in this room right now. It is loud. So it's day two, and Dalton Castle is not wrestling today. No, Dalton's taking a little break, but we've got a, we've got a replacement for him out there. I mean, this will be aired by the time this is aired. You think, okay, so no spoilers? No, you can spoil it. Oh, I mean, like, no, I can say what I want. Nobody's going to know. Right. Uh, yeah, tonight I'm bringing, bringing him back, bringing back old smooth sailing. Ashley Remington. Which makes sense because we're actually on a boat. Yeah, it, it felt wrong. If we were to do this cruise and I didn't wrestle as Ashley, I would live with nothing but a big ball of regret. And for those who don't know, Ashley Remington, much like Matt Classic. Yeah, but the thing with Ashley is he's still Dalton at heart. The, the, the story lineage is, it's like a Brewster's Millionaire situation. My rich uncle, Crabtree, died. Left me a lot of money, but I wasn't allowed to claim that money unless I live the lifestyle that the money deserves. <laughs> so thus, Ashley Remington was born. And this was done for Chikara. Yeah, yeah, I did it uh, only in Chikara, actually. This would be the first time it ever happens outside of a Chikara ring. Is Mike Quackenbush aware of this, and he, will he sue you? Uh, he is aware of it. Uh, he he kind of sounded like he gave his blessing. He was cool with it. <laughs> 
So we'll see when the when the papers are filed how he really feels. I have uh, experience with uh, that guy, and I can help you. <laughs> but I thought your guy retired. I'll be screwed. I will get him out of retirement oh, for good you. Gap. He loves wrestling cases. <laughs> And maybe we'll see more of Ashley Remington. He was uh, he was over. The sailing crowd loved Ashley Remington. And as Dalton was seen all over the ship in various different places, uh, the chant of Ashley was followed very closely behind. So I told you about some weird stuff, some fun stuff. Dalton explained becoming Ashley Remington. And while doing commentary for Mark Briscoe versus Adam Page, the craziest thing of all time, I think that I've ever seen in my professional wrestling career went down. And I can't wait for the clip to to make it online. I hope it makes it online. But while in the moment, after the match, I grabbed the microphone and Jay and I attempted to talk about it before exiting the, uh, the, the arena, if you will. Jay, it's the second night. <laughs> I know what you're going to say. I know what you're gonna say. All right, guys, that's tomorrow. Brother versus brother. Jay is laughing right now. He did. Oh, no. We'll wait for Val to finish up here. Hold on. Tonight, here at 8 p.m., there's more right wrestling there. action. It, it is absolutely unmissable. Ball. We realize there's a lot going on on the Jericho Cruise, but come right back here to the pool deck at 8 p.m. That's where the party Great is seats. for more wrestling action. All of you are here tonight at 8 p.m. Rangers. Wait, before they get out, hold on. Okay, so we're about to leave the commentary booth, <laughs> and we just saw something. It's, we made history tonight. Incredible. It was incredible. We saw, so first of yeah, all, picture we, this, we're on top of the boat, commentary. we're on top of the boat. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> picture this first, because this is important, we're on a boat in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, no, middle, middle of nowhere. In the, there's water, miles and miles of water, no place to, there's no place out there, there's miles and miles of water, okay? So we're in the middle of the boat doing commentary of the, of the for a match, and I don't even know how it caught our eye, but off in the distance we saw a bird flying. And I don't know, I just didn't think anything of it. I, I just thought, hey, we're in the middle of the ocean. Bert, this is the sky. There is no, there is, there's nothing here that you just think, like, there's no cover over here. It's just this is where birds, this is where they live. This is what they do. Yeah. Right, right. And this thing came flapping in, and it was like in slow motion landed on, it looked like it landed on the lap of this woman in the front row, and I lost it. Commentary is screwed. We're going to redo that. Uh, it just crashed. It, was it crashed into the front row. What it reminded me of was it had to make, it was desperate to land. Because like I said, we're in the middle of nowhere. Where the fuck did that bird come from? No, it reminded me of the, bo- of the boxing it match. It had to land. It had to land. It was a desperate need of... In my mind, it, it didn't want to pay for the cruise. <laughs> but wanted to watch good wrestling. <laughs> <laughs> wanted to see the great action of Ring of Honor. <laughs> to me, it reminded me of the boxing match where the guy flew down and had like casino painted on his back. Right, because he met, he didn't land perfectly where he was supposed to. This this bird landed in the front row. Oh uh, well, all right. The music is playing. We made history today. Oh, look at this. <laughs> I swear, I swear, it was it was the greatest. It was the greatest thing. And how contagious is Jay Lethal's laugh? It's so fun. It makes everything so much fun. And I couldn't stop thinking and talking about this bird scenario. I couldn't stop. Two out of the four of my favorite comedians on television right now are Sal and Q from The Impractical Jokers. They asked me to be on their podcast that they were filming. And crazy enough, and I'll play it real quickly here, crazy enough, Sal and Q were talking about both having snakes that they had named Damien in their childhood. And then they turned to me and they go, hey, anything ever happened to you with animals in the ring? I had to continue the tale. Get it out there. Let the world know. It's such a fun story to tell. Oh, my God. It was so crazy. Have you ever contact with any animals in the ring? Uh, a dog died during the middle of a match two days ago on this very cruise. Stop, Ted Duck? What happened? Stop, died? This is the craziest thing that has ever happened in the world of professional. 
professional wrestling. We were, I was doing commentary for Ring of Honor. We were watching the matches, and from the heavens <laughs> comes a FF dog. And we the John did not stand some motherfucker. <laughs> we got you, but you're gonna leave at 25 years old. <laughs> I've never seen anything, but we were doing the commentary, and, and I, we're doing this for Honor Club, which is Ring of Honor that's a streaming. Uh, the streaming system, and we're supposed to be really serious about this. Like, <laughs> calling the man, calling the action down the middle. There's a headlock, there's a, a big pose line, there's a drop down. Oh my god, I'm done! It's crashing into the ground! Oh my god! And we got the guys coming to Jay Lethal. We, it was the most excited for wrestling we got the whole shit. It's a slobber cracker! And that's just a, a clip that was recorded on my iPhone from the What Say You podcast. They haven't put it up yet. It should probably be up soon. I'm sure I'll retweet about it. But I guess that's probably a, a great segue to get into the comedy aspect of the show. The reason that I was originally brought onto the show, Marty and I, we did our show where we watch bad wrestling to a packed, packed cruise ship room, the Bliss Lounge. So fun. Anyone who was there will tell you how much fun it was. It was nonstop laughter. Even Jericho was watching and then came up to me afterwards and just said it was one of the funniest things he had ever seen. Which made me feel good. Justified the reason that we were on the ship. These are the same shows that we'll be touring around the Midwest with. Wednesday, November 14th in Detroit. Thursday, November 15th in Cleveland. Friday, November 16th at the University of Miami of Ohio. And the Wednesday before Thanksgiving in Chicago, Illinois. Colt commanded com to get further information no clips from that to put up but it was fun it was great the bad news is ron funches didn't make the ship the good news is marty derosa got to fill in and do a half hour of comedy the cool thing is marty is filming his very first comedy special november 7th timothy o'toole's in chicago illinois if you're in chicago go watch him film his debut record and it was perfect as he has the material ready to go so a half hour was easy and he performed it on the boat and he fucking killed it he was great he asked me to open up for him and i was more than happy to do it i got a fun little wrestling set that i have and then after both myself and marty was gonna be raven Raven was going to do a little stand-up comedy. I mean, we're backstage, and we're about to do some comedy with Raven. <laughs> ah, the old slide whistle gag. Yeah, I'm looking forward to this. Uh, you said you're a little nervous. Can I, can I put that on the record? Yeah, you can put that on the record. I've never, I'm used to doing stand-up in front of 100 people, you know, and most of them aren't even there anyway. So this is going to be a much bigger challenge, because there's going to be at least 103 people there. Was this always part of the deal of coming on this cruise? Yeah, that, I, I thought I actually was. Yeah, it was. I was going to do stand up one night in my podcast one night, so it just turned into stand up two nights. Why didn't you? Why aren't you doing the podcast? Because I think there was just too many podcasts, and then they'd have to fly my coast out, and it would become a production. So you do you go up and stuff in Atlanta? Or are you doing stand up? I do. I've done stand up. Uh, I started doing it in like 2013. I did like my first gig ever was a 45 minute headliner, and uh, and I memorized nothing because I was still writing the jokes the same day, and uh, and it did well. I mean, you know, and then and then I got hired by Bob Levy, uh, the Reverend Bob Levy, and he booked me on a tour with him as the Levy World Order because my real name's Scott Levy, and so we did that. And then I said, man, I better start doing some open mics and improve so people will actually call me back if I want to go back. And so I started doing open mics in Atlanta and then and then uh, and then started going back, you know, doing the wrestling thing, you know, like tag matches and uh, personal appearances and then started throwing in the occasional comedy gig. And so I do about half a dozen a year. And with this, with you liking vacation so much, you're like, oh, a vacation. Yeah, I'll go on. Yeah. It's, yeah. But I mean, and I, I wanted to because I wanted to go. I wanted to see what the, the big hubbub is about the cruise world. Cruise world order. Yes, yes. Art Cruz, very old-time jobber guy. Terry Cruz? Uh, Terry, even better. Art Cruz was a little less famous than Art Cru- than Terry Cruz. T- Art Cruz probably didn't have as good as a body as Terry Cruz either. Or Pablo Cruz. I don't know Pablo Cruz. Uh, Love Will Find a Way. That was his big hit. Okay. That was their big hit. I, I don't know why the group was called Pablo Cruz, because there's nobody named Pablo Cruz in it. 
Nigga, love will find a way. Ah. It's you'll never recognize by my singing. But it was a big hit. Are you on the karaoke for this cruise too? God no. They would they would ban me on they'd throw me off the ship. Pat, you can be that much worse than Pat Patterson, right? I thought Pat was supposed to be good at singing. I think he's a pro karaoke. Right? Yeah, that's what I think, too. Yeah. Well, it should be fun tonight. Yeah, it should be, man. I'm glad you're doing it. I'm glad that uh, I like Ron Funches, but I'm glad he canceled, so you got to come aboard, you and Marty. I mean, we were aboard already. Oh, okay. Well, then never mind, then. <laughs> Screw it. Can I ask a question? Yeah, Marty's, Marty's chipping in. He has I'm, a question. I'm dying for Tess's question. So when you would go to open mics... Comics are huge wrestling fans. Did they lose their minds when you just showed up at an open mic? Uh, yeah, I mean, yes and no. It was um, I was in that period where my career had done a downswell because I was finished with TNA, and so I wasn't on TV, and it hadn't been quite long enough to become, you know, repopular through DVTs, and so I was in that that murky gray area where where you're. You know, in WCW, I was a B-level celebrity. Then after it ended, I was C. I was in D, went to TNA. And then I was about a Z-level by this point. And then now I'm back up to a K. So, you, but you would go up there as Raven or as Scott? Yeah, as Raven, yeah. And, and the, the cool thing was the, um, the guy who was the manager of the punchline, his, besides being his dad, being a singer from, or the singer guitarist from 38 Special, he was a big Raven fan, so he'd always get me, you know, so I wouldn't have to show up at like 6 o'clock and wait till 8.30 to go on, you know. He would bump you. Yeah. yeah. Per- perks of the fame. Mm. He'd put me into the into the lineup. You know, I'd show up like it, as the show started. I'm like, can you stay? Can you throw me in? Yeah, we'll throw you in. Yeah. So it's cool. All right, we'll throw you in tonight. Thank you. Just don't throw me in the deep end. I nope. can't swim anymore. No problems. A lot of people like the current product. They love what's happening. Taking a shot at Kenny Omega not being New Jack is probably the perfect segue into Kenny Omega on the show, as this was the last night of the cruise. It had been a busy cruise for everybody, and Kenny kind of explains how and why. Oh, I, I, I saw how excited... This will come out Thursday, and Being the Elite comes out when? Mondays, right? We are hoping that it comes out, if not... On Halloween Day, on November 1st. It's all up to the strength of our Wi-Fi. Okay, so I would just tell me about what's been happening on this boat, because this podcast is what's happening this week. We're on a cruise, and you guys have been machines. Is that right? I mean, yeah. Marty and Paige, I think, have done five matches each. Uh, Young Bucks have been DFL every every night that they've worked. Uh, we sort of had the big advertised matchup with Chris Jericho, of course, as well. And you know, I've had multiple meet and greets. I've had the Street Fighter Invitational Tournament. Uh, there has been a lot of activities, so it sort of caused us to make all of our filming uh, in between time and in the meantime. But also, we're working on something very special, which we can only do late at night in the witching hour. So we're talking filming days that end at 3, 4 a.m. So it's been a lot of work. A lot of people think this is a vacation. And even though it is fun and some of the most fun I've had uh, in wrestling, I am worn out. We're not telling anybody or is this being told? I, I won't give details, but we are attempting our first Halloween special. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> We're like the Simpsons, right? Exactly. Treehouse of Horrors. Which was your favorite? Oh, man. I, it's hard to remember because there's so many, but I always like, what was it? Something makes Homer something something, right? Yes, yeah, yeah, that was good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That no, was good no beard. Yeah. There was the other one, too. Um, oh man, I forget his name, but he was the criminal in Simpsons. Were, his hair was, he got scalped or whatever. So his hair had, uh, took a life of its own and was, was possessing people. <laughs> so that was good. The monkey's paw one was very good, too. But this is, there's weird stuff in this. In yours. There will be some weird stuff, some familiar stuff. We hope that it will uh, entice some laughter. Of course, BT is always about having a fun time. So it will still be funny, but we're hoping uh, to up the creep factor a little bit this time around. And uh, as I'm talking to you, yeah. you're wearing the most ridiculous outfit. Oh, yeah. I'm towed right now. I, it, is, it is not quite Halloween. We're approaching Halloween. And um, 
I uh, I am wearing a toad outfit. I'm talking to you like a normal person, and you're in this. Yeah, thing. because I feel normal. This is my element, right? I mean, last year it was Princess Jasmine, so this is actually sort of a step more towards normal. At least I'm a male character this time around. And you guys are all dressed like um, Mario Kart. <laughs> People, things. Yeah, there's a, there's a constant theme, and we are all uh, characters from the Mario universe. And if people don't know, in Japan, right, this is what I think about, first of all, is those assholes driving around in the carts. Right, which I don't know if you knew this or not, but that's now been outlawed. Has it really? Yes, yeah, and the, the, of course those people are furious, but Nintendo cracked down on those guys. And As they should have. Yeah, they, I agree, because I think... I think they called it like Mario Kart, but Mario Kart is spelled with a K, and it's like Mario Kart with a C, or something. Something is very close to it. It's it's obvious where the inspiration comes from. The costumes remain the same. So, yeah, I mean, I I do think it was probably for the better. Well, I look forward to watching uh, this this week's episode, and it was fun uh, being with you on the boat. Very fun, and I hope we do it again next year too. Let's dance or ship. <laughs> let's let's ship. Let's cruise. Yeah, let's cruise. Yeah. And as I record this part. The Bing the Elite is out. I just watched it at the gym, and it's uh, very fun. My hat's off to both Hangman Page and Nick Jackson for the editing and those guys for, for being so creative and so fun. But the cruise, it eventually had to come to an end. Marty Skrull was finishing it off with a karaoke party, to which he told me this morning that the people of the Norwegian Cruise Line told him That was, hands down, the greatest karaoke party of any cruise they've ever had in the history of cruises, times a hundred. He said that was a direct quote. And I wanted to grab one of the wrestlers as we wound down the night. And it wasn't very wound down because it was, because it was a party. And when there's a party, there's Kenny King. And when Kenny King is too busy hitting on ladies because he was on The Bachelor, so every lady wants his attention, you talk to Matt Taven. Hey! (laughs) <laughs> so, it's the last night we're here at Marty Scrolls Karaoke. Act. A packed house at Marty Scrolls Karaoke. You can hear it. <laughs> yeah. And uh, you just did a very nice rendition of both Bloodhound Gang Acapulco and... Acapulco? That's a place in Mexico. Acapella? Acapella. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, you know, they, they had a limited supply here of songs. No Michael Jackson. How does that work? You know, no Seal, no Careless Whisper, no Blood Allen Gang. Uh, so I had to just kind of acapulco that. And then I did uh, only the first verse of Ice Ice Baby because I thought I knew more of that song than I actually did. But you allowed the fans in, and they had a great time as part of that experience. Yeah, no, one was very nervous, very nervous. Uh, and the other one was very confident in his vanilla ice, so I had to pull him right up on stage. Tomorrow we get off the boat, and that's it. We're done. Uh, I'm trying to stay on the boat as long as possible because my flight's not till 6 in the afternoon. Really? Yeah, so I don't know what I'm going to do tomorrow, so I'm going to try to see how... I'm going to try to make them kick me off the boat. I don't know, when you look back at your career, like... Uh, how'd you enjoy this? Did you enjoy this? Did uh, did you appreciate how weird it was for what it was? Oh, I hate this. Is the worst experience of my life. Oh my good. You know what? I would much rather cult uh, instead of wrestling on a boat, sun tanning all day, going to the Bahamas, wrestling again, hanging out with my friends all, all night. I'd much rather be in a, bit, a sweaty VFW. You know what I mean? With no locker room. Um, you know, no water provided, you know, barely making money to drive home. That's what I would prefer. No, this is amazing. Like, this is, uh, and if I was a wrestling fan, like, my God, what a, what a, what a weekend. You know, I kind of came into it a little bit like, oh, man, this could be rough. But it was literally probably one of the best experiences of my wrestling career. I, I think that was the, the important part is was the uh, wrestling fan. And hopefully they do do another one. And hopefully this word spreads. Because it, this is everything a fan would want, I would think. I mean, what else did you want? You get to wake up, do wrestling events. There was video games. There was matches. There was concerts. There was meet and greets. There was Colton Marty, who had the Briscoes on and completely killed it. I, I mean, those two are just amazing. But, like, man, what, what else would you ask for? If you're a diehard wrestling fan, you just got to spend a trip to the Bahamas with all the people they idolize. That's pretty, pretty nifty. Most importantly, you, right? I mean, the ladies have been, you know what I mean? They spent all this, they saved all year to hang out for this long with me. And, uh, you know, I think, I think they got their money's worth. 
I think everybody got their money's worth. A lot of us weren't sure. We weren't sure. I think a lot of the fans weren't sure, but they're like, ah, why not? A cruise. We want to take a vacation. There's going to be the wrestling. And it was just like StarCast, like that opportunity where there's so many cool different things around. But this time, it's it was. I feel more intimate because we're all on a boat together and we're all part of these festivities. And uh, I had so much fun. And uh, hopefully this is uh, a thing that happens Year after year, and hopefully I get to be a part of it. So that was a weekend on a boat. And what a week it was. And what a podcast it was. It isn't over, though, because we do have some plugs and... Upcoming events! All right, the best way that you can support, ColtMerch.com, DigitalColt.com, Twitter and Instagram, at Colt Cabana, Facebook slash AOW Podcast, also slash Colt Cabana. My storytelling podcast, Pro Wrestling Fringe, plus past archives of this show, old and new, are ad-free on StitcherPremium.com slash Colt. Use the code Colt, get a free month. ColtWrestling at gmail.com is my very public email. Maybe you want to put me on your show or convention or even be documented on this very podcast. I have a YouTube channel. I also have a website, ColtCabana.com. That's where you can find my P.O. Box. If you want to send me some snail mail, upcoming Friday, November 2nd, San Antonio, Texas, Facebook slash RCW Forever. November 3rd, 4th, 7th, 8th, 9th, and 11th, Pittsburgh, Columbus, Maine, Boston, Buffalo, and Toronto. I'm doing commentary for ROHWrestling.com. Saturday, November 10th, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, IWCWrestling.com. Wednesday, November 14th, Detroit, Michigan, SanctuaryDetroit.com. That's Marty and I doing comedy. Thursday, November 15th, Cleveland, Ohio, ClevelandComedyFestival.com That's Marty and I doing comedy Wednesday, November 21st, Chicago, Illinois Live at NorthBar.com You guessed it, Marty and I doing comedy Saturday, November 24th, Chicago, Illinois AAWrestling.com Friday, November 30th, Oswegan, Ontario, Canada Facebook slash SKM Six Nations Saturday, December 1st, Brantford, Ontario, Canada Facebook slash Magnificent Championship Sunday, December 2nd, Hamilton, Ontario, Canada Alpha-1Wrestling.com And Sunday Sunday, December 16th, San Juan, Puerto Rico, a huge show in Puerto Rico, Facebook slash CWA. PR intro music is by the ukulele teacher on YouTube. Outro music by Super Fun Yeah Yeah Rocket Ship. Podcast cover art designed by Jimmy Lee. Photo by James Musselwhite. Thanks to Christopher Daniels, Jay Lethal, Dalton Castle, Matt Taven, Marty DeRosa, Sal and Q, Raven, and Kenny Omega. Thanks to our sponsors, HighSpots.com, a VOD service that is amazing. Watch those PWGs and $5 wrestlings. Plus, AMA knee pads, gear, masks, even a wrestling ring. Thanks to OneHourTees.com. They help run ProWrestlingTees.com. That's where you can support your favorite independent wrestler directly. All right, after a week of sailing on the seas, I got to do some sailing on my couch tomorrow. One day off, and then I'm back to hitting the road for six days in a row. Also, on my day off tomorrow, I'm filming something for Vice Australia at Pro Wrestling Tees. So, no days off. There, there was Darren Young. He was Mr. No Days Off. I'm Mr. No Days Off, but fucking wish. Wish so bad I had a million days off. But uh, I wouldn't be me then, would I? All right, I got to get out of here. I need some sleep. This has been The Art of Wrestling. For Colt Cabana, I'm Colt Cabana. Thanks. Here in the Bliss Lounge, the unprofessional wrestling show. Come on, y'all, give it up. Please welcome to the stage Colt Cabana and Marty DeRosa.